The tip of the tongue, the tip of the lips. <laughs> it's a good warm-up. Okay. All right. Hi, I'm Greg Gage, and that's me on the right. And I'm Tim Marzullo, and that's me on the left. We're grad students at the University of Michigan. Have you ever read an abstract for a, at a conference and said, man, this sounds really, really interesting. I want to go to this talk. And you get there five minutes early. You start reading it again. You know, oh, it's going to be great. And the presenter gets up there. It, it is so boring. Your mind begins to drift before you even actually get to the conclusions of the talk. And the data might be very good, and often they are, but they're presented so poorly that the message doesn't come across. And what's amazing is there's only three or four short rules you need to know to dramatically improve your presentation. So uh, we'll just walk you through this. This is about a five-minute talk, and if you listen to it, your presentation's guaranteed <laughs> <laughs> to improve dramatically. Oh, 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 oh my God. Uh, oh. Right, Tim, well, we need to okay. restart. We need yeah. to... What are we going to do? Uh, oh, hold on. Okay. How's everybody doing out there? <laughs> don't, 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 don't you hate technology? So what we're trying to show is that what would happen if you actually gave your presentation and all of a sudden your, your notebook failed or the projector failed and you had, you're left with nothing except for your own voice? I think it's a useful intellectual exercise to do that because if you can give your presentation without the use of your presentation media, sure it won't be as good because you won't be able to show your data, but can you still get the message across of the experiments that you did? And if the answer is yes, you are fully prepared to give your talk. If the answer is no, you are relying on your presentation tools too much as a crutch. It's leading you rather than you leading the presentation. The text should be for the audience, not for yourself. You shouldn't have your crib notes written on a big projector so that everyone can see what you're reading. On that point, this is our second point. The outline. Who needs an outline? Maybe, I would debate maybe for an hour-long talk, but most of the talks that grad students do and scientists do at conferences are more 15 minutes to half an hour. And you can just say your outline as in, I'm going to talk about three experiments today, experiment one, experiment two, and experiment three. Go over them briefly and then go right into your data. Because if you have your outline in text on there in the screen, people will read your text faster than you can say it. You will already begin to lose them. And once you begin to lose them, you're going to have to fight to get them back. But the other thing that's interesting is that I often hear students tell me that they have been taught in speech class to always start with an outline. I think that's a, that's a misnomer and you need to squash that now it is wrong people you do not need one text <laughs> who needs it you don't need to have this much text on your screen in fact you could get away without having any text on your screen that's true if you practice you will have the whole presentation in your head and you won't have to rely as we've said before on the text to lead you it's very important to practice and you only need to practice two or three times maybe in front of your friends and then you'll be good enough to give the presentation. But the other caveat is that you don't want to over-practice such that you have your talk memorized verbatim because you'll end up sounding like a robot. You'll sound like a book, and human speech has different cadences than uh, the written word. Another thing we want to talk about is figures. I mean, we are scientists. We present data all the time, but the data has to speak for itself. And it's kind of hard when we speak for it by putting bullets on the left-hand side like we have on this figure. And then a big title, which is like overshadowing the actual axes on the data themselves. Yes, I see this all the time. The labels on the graph are actually smaller than the two or three word insultingly simple blurbs onto the left of the figure. A much better way is simply to make the figure the whole slide. If you want, you can put a little title with a description, but you don't need to put all those like bullet point blurbs on the side. Just walk your audience through this data as if you were telling a story because you are telling a story and hopefully they can come to the same conclusions you did. They can learn the same time that you're actually presenting the data and you guys can work together with your data set and then everyone will be a lot happier for it. Okay, and finally, this is more a message uh, for the professors who might be listening to this talk. Greg and I see this all the time, especially at the Society for Neuroscience, which often has these mini symposia, two hours long, say, on something like the cortical column. And there'll be prominent investigators who will have an opportunity to give 15-minute talks on some new experiment they've done or talk about some new hypothesis they have. But often the case is that investigators feel like they have to justify the scientific output of their past 10 years of research, and they will go so fast through their data that the audience will become muddled and walk out of that room not really understanding what was supposed to come across. But if they just slowed down, talked about just their experiment, that their, their hypothesis they had, and just their experiment, can you imagine walking away saying, wow, 
you know, Mrs. X had such a great idea and her experiment was just perfect. And I've never thought of it that way. It's okay to have a short talk. It's often better because it's more poignant. And it's okay to only talk about one recent experiment. No one's going to judge you. A good talk speaks much better than a fast, what I've done the last 10 years. So okay, we, we went through four basic things. What was number one? The, the first thing we need to talk about is just be prepared. Practice your talk. Can you do it if the computer shuts down? Number two, you don't need an outline for a short talk or even for a long talk. That's debatable, though. Simply tell the audience what you're going to tell them. Uh, number three? Number three is don't put your crib notes up on the screen. Leave the text for your little notes if you need them in front of you, but don't put them on the projector so that the entire audience is reading it. Yes, some people have so much text on the slides that I actually can predict what they're going to say. So I don't even need them to talk, and that's bad. And number four, make your figures big. Just make them as big as you possibly can. We want to be able to read your data. So that's it. Uh, those four basic things will dramatically improve your presentations. And if you're in the Ann Arbor area, you're an undergrad or a grad student, Greg and I would be happy to meet with you over a half hour or so to uh, improve your presentations because ultimately we are selfish people. Exactly. And we're very selfish and we're going to be sitting in your audience one day and we don't want to be bored. And if you're watching this on YouTube and you want to be able to contact us, here's our email address here. Please contact us. We'd be able to uh, walk through your talk with you and maybe give you some pointers as well. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Woo.